<laughs> so if you've been following it, well, here are the uh, remaining candidates. We've got five, five left at the time of recording. It constantly changes, so there might be people going, you're out of date, bro, because it moves so fast. Yeah. But last night we had um, the update where Suella was knocked out, if we got that video. And this will give you all the numbers as well. We can announce the results of the second ballot in the leadership election. As yesterday, I'll read the name of the candidate and the number of votes cast uh, in each case. Uh, first of all, 356 votes were cast out of a possible 358. The numbers are as follows. Badenoch, 49. Braverman, 27. Mordant, 83. Sunak, 101. Oh Truss, 64. <laughs> Tugendat, 32. Therefore, under the rules, Suella Braverman is eliminated from the uh, contest and the others right. are able to go forward uh, to a further ballot on Monday. Next thing's on Monday. I didn't know that was going to trigger you so hard, Carl, just I the just, numbers. <laughs> yeah, just, just, oh, God, the Conservatives just, like, Sunak is just the worst. And Braverman, I thought, was actually one of the better ones, to be honest. I was back in Braverman uh, First, actually, I said on GB News that she would run before anyone else knew she'd run. I based it simply on this article here from uh, May where she said teachers should not pander to trans pupils. And mm -hmm. it was one of those unnecessary articles in the sense that why are you sticking your neck out yeah. saying an actually conservative thing for once? And I go, oh, she's running. Yeah. No one else knew it. I intuited it, and she was. And she did much better than people thought. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know who she was, to be honest. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's not that well-known, so she, she was a dark horse candidate. I thought she might you know, come through, but sort of Kemi sort of took over the momentum. Mm. Now, I'm told Suella's well, very conservative in, in private. It's one of those annoying things where it's like, could you be in public? You're in the conservative party. You Do you know. mind? Yeah. yeah, she is quite conservative in public, but even more in private. It's like, but um, an inside type person who knows these things did tell me she was a bit daft. So, I don't know, take, <laughs> take your pick. But um, Farage thinks she's the only one that would have got a proper Brexit done. So right. it's not great news that she's out, but she's now backing uh, Truss. She switched to Liz Truss. To the disappointment of her friend Kemi, because her and Kemi were all best buds. They had a, they were in blue dresses together, having right. a great time. I think I've skipped that. We're, we're going to do a video, but I've skipped it. But it, it's too long. But basically, she's now switched to trust, and she's saying she's the best person to unleash the opportunities of Brexit and deliver <sighs> tax cuts. So they've all gone behind trust because trust is the more well-known candidate. Yeah, so but also now I know she's a liar. No one thinks Liz Truss is the best for anything, at anything ever, anywhere. <laughs> Let's trust some moron. Yeah, they're basically getting behind trust because she's the only one that can take out the Sunak Morden monster potentially Gosh. from the right or the slightly further yeah, yeah. right. They're all communists. We yeah, know yeah, this. But yeah, yeah, they're all. It's not even that they're communists. They're, they're the crap. <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it's getting nasty because we had. I don't know if you yeah. have that tweet John where they're getting the blue dress. It doesn't particularly matter, but she's like, oh. "This is the only blue on blue you'll be seeing." But then mm. Suella didn't back her, so she's very upset. Yeah, I like or reasonably well. upset. Yeah, she's very good, smart. She's very interesting. Mm. Um, we'll get on to Kemi. The other, the other one that's probably going to go out next, who knows, may have gone out by the time we do this, or he may stick, is Tugendhat, who claims that he's sticking around. Uh, he's done a tweet saying, I've never turned down a challenge because the odds were against me. I don't plan to start now. See you at the debate. So he wants to do the TV debate. Oh, yeah. Steve Baker was hoping Swella would get to the TV debate because he said she'd do really well. He backed well, her, didn't he? He, he did. Because yeah. I thought about maybe being pro-Baker or pro Swella, but when he backed her, it was a no-brainer. But anyway, now she's out. So, and... Tugendhat, by the way, if you don't know about him, he's one of the few that actually did vote against vaccine passports, but he is a hardcore oh. Remainer, very, very much to the left of the party, posh son of a high court judge, do with that what you will, doesn't particularly matter, but very big on military spending, there he's saying we'd, I'd commit 3% of the GDP to defence spending, <laughs> former military guy, All right, yeah. He's, yeah. A bit, he's a neocon type yeah. neo-lib guy, but you can't be a neocon without the con, he threw Scruton under the bus, yeah. Sir Roger Scruton, our foremost conservative thinker, I will personally never forgive him. Yeah. The video's too long, but basically, he three of them threw him under the bus. Mercer, Tugendhat, and of course, James Brokenshire, whose surname sounds like the decline of England, the Brokenshire, you know what I mean? But they threw, they threw yep. Scruton under the bus, and Tugendhat was the only one to apologise, to his credit, but for me, we can never forget. Yeah, no, that's... Oh, oh, I'm sorry I did that terrible thing, so why did you do it? Yeah, <laughs> why did... And, and if anyone doesn't know the story, they sided with the new statesman, a leftist rag... They instinctively went, oh, I'm sure the new statement is telling the truth about our best conservative philosopher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. just back them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you in the conservative party? That's a communist magazine, mate. You know. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're but I'm sure they're common. right in this case when yeah. they smear our foremost <laughs> conservative yeah. intellectual like yeah. F off. Sir bro. Roger Scruton. Oh yeah, what a Nazi. Yeah. So yeah. as uh, Charlie Peters has rightly said in Spiked, anyone but Tom Tugan. Though not quite anyone because not Penny, but let's or, do or Rishi. Yes. Or any of the rest, basically. I've been doing them in reverse <laughs> order of like uh, likelihood. So I'm going to do right. Kemi next right. based okay. on the numbers we heard in that first yeah. bit that triggered you. So um, we've got uh, Kemi <laughs> next, and I'm back in Kemi. People, my endorsement's obviously very important, and. Uh, Someone else who's much more important is David Starkey, who's also mm. back, Kemi. Let's see what he said. When you look at that, uh, that leaders board there, look at them. Beautiful lot. Do you have a favourite? Is there <laughs> anyone in there that's kind of taking your fancy? Yes, very strongly, Kemi Badenoch. I oh, think she seems to me to be the only one who actually is capable of thinking. Yep. Right. Uh, she's a completely different sort of voice. And I think we need a different sort of voice. The trouble is, Sunak is brilliantly intelligent, smooth, polished, and all of those things. But he went along with what I think is one of the great catastrophes of our history, which is lockdown. Now, I totally agree. Yeah, I agree. The only, you could argue, hypocrisy is that Kemi voted for COVID passports and Starkey himself was bizarrely in favour of them in what seemed to me to be a kind of emotional over-attachment to the polio vaccine when he was a child. Right, And not right, understanding right. that this is not that kind of I vaccine, did, I Dave. did see that as well. Yes, it was weird. He's yeah. a great man, but that was the one... Mm. I let him off. I let Starkey have that one, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, I can't expect him to have been all, on all of the anonymous internet forums we've been on <laughs> to, uh, to see the real truth about things. Shh, they're anonymous. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but he is a great man. He's from Kendall, yeah. same as me. I love Starkey, but on that one, he was a he bit off. Great. And um, But to be fair to Kemi... Uh, they they all voted for COVID passports except Tugendha, and Kemi was apparently privately against them, which uh, Calvin Robinson has pointed out here. Mm. Kemi Baynott was one of the few people fighting against vaccine passports in government meetings behind the scenes. She had her backed. Rishi Sunak wasn't even bothered about turning up to these meetings, according to Nadine Doris. Mm. And he makes the fair point that she was bound by collective responsibility, as yeah, Jacob Rees Mogg talks about. into it as it is. Yeah, yeah, and we've got another tweet where he says that mm. uh, somewhere. There we go. Kemi was against vaccine passports. Yeah, he's just basically saying he had to follow the, the party. And, and, and it's fair enough. The thing is, Carl, I get this a lot on Twitter, like, well, you know they're all pro-COVID passports. You know they're all... And I do know this, but if we're talking about this question, yeah. there's all these people that are bad. They're all for this thing. But which of the one is least bad? Yeah. Well, that's what we're talking about. So yeah. let's just deal with that question. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Pragmatically. Yes. Which is the least poisonous of these options? Yeah. And Kemi definitely seems to be a preferable choice here. Yeah, and I like Kemi on a personal level because I was somehow let into the House of Lords the other day due to an admin <laughs> error. And Leo Curse was also let in, which marred the event somewhat. But but and you can see that Andrew Doyle was there, and I watched Kemi's speech from a few feet away. I didn't even know she was speaking, hmm. and I found her quite interesting. She did, it's quite funny. And let's see this clip she did about women. The second myth you often hear is that the debate about free speech is a conspiracy whipped up to spark a culture war, or it's a cover for bigoted middle-aged white men to spout politically incorrect nonsense. Well, I'm not middle-aged, I'm not white, <laughs> and I'm not a man. <laughs> and uh, Tony Sewell, Julie sure? Bindle, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure, I'm, I am a woman, I'm a woman, and I know what I'm about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well so, um, yeah, we, all, we got a laugh and it got a cheer, and I said, I turned to someone and said, like, where are we that, like, that gets a cheer, I know what a woman is, but that's where we are, and at least she's prepared to say it. Because uh, she, she's quite big on the culture war. I mean, her initial... Yeah. Oh, she's huge. Her initial pitch even mentioned Thomas Sowell. I mean, that's that's out there. That's based for a, a, a Tory that's leadership. That's very candidate. good for a Tory leadership. Yeah. And um, so, yes, the, her problem is, of course, the party are not backing her. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be tougher. But And, of course, the left have nothing much to attack her with, which is where I'm going with this tweet. We get ni- the input of Nigerian royalty here. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Shola, yeah. Yeah, and I think Ka- Ka- uh, Callum played this the other day, but Shola, Dr. Shola is saying... Uh, Kemi is in a Tory race to be Prime Minister. Her power-grabbing ambition is rooted in discrediting and delegitimizing anti-racism efforts, denying Brilliant. systemic racism, Brilliant. whitewashing British Empire, enabling Thumbs white up. supremacy. I just love that. Love the it, black yeah. candidate is enabling white supremacy. But, like, does Dr. Shola realise that to the opposite... She's in she's in a particular bubble where she's like, look, if I say all of these things, then people around me say, oh, my God, Kemi sounds terrible. But people outside of that bubble might be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's this? Yeah. 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 I hadn't heard of this Badenoch before, but she sounds great. And, and to Dr. Scholar's credit, um, systemic racism does exist in this country. 
against white people, yeah, as, as we've documented. No, but as Callum yeah. documents at length. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't, get, can't get jobs, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Literally, you can't apply to certain BBC uh, positions. Yeah, yeah. That, policeman, that policeman was one of the few people to successfully sue. <laughs> he actually did, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, and of course, so all the weirdos are against Kemi. The fox killer is against her. Uh, <laughs> I don't know we've got him. Oh yeah, he's and he's famously sent this tweet. Do you think the members of your party are ready to select a brown man, Rishi? And he just got slammed for that. Rightly, absolutely obscene tweet. Oof. And, it, and uh, I think I've got my tweet. Have you got my reply to it? Where I? Oh yeah, because he then he then doubled down and went right down his you know right. right down the rabbit hole. And he says, I've also tweeted out a long list of people of color who don't have a history of objecting to me or my work who thought I was quite right to ask the question I did. And I just wrote, countering accusations of racism by checks notes, making a long list of people of colour. <laughs> but you'll, you'll notice how that, like, no one in, like, you know, our circles ever talks about Rishi Sunak's skin colour. Exactly. No one talks about Kemi Badenoch's skin colour. They it, talk about their skin colour. Exactly. And w- the, the, these Conservative candidates are completely beyond that. They're just saying, here are the issues, let's talk about that. Yeah. No one on our side cares, like you say. Their side's obsessed, mm. and they look like idiots, and yeah. they're self-imploding. And that's the genius of these candidates. I mean, you, yeah. And the weird, yeah, you could argue it's a bit weird that like the, the white men in the Tory race are more to the left. And to be allowed to have Conservative wow. views, you have to be a woman, ideally, of colour. So it is weird, a game, to some extent. Yeah, yeah. but like, I've noticed that in the, in the sort of like, the, the more right-wing you go the more Kemi Badenoch is favoured. And she happens to be the darkest-skinned candidate. But it's not about skin colour. It's about the fact that she clearly hates the left and she's going to destroy them. Yeah, but the cynical <laughs> part of me, from within the par- thinking within how the party might think about it, they yeah. might go, OK, we're not going to put forward Jacob Rees-Mogg because yeah, he's, he's an old he's white guy white who, man, yeah. who has the, those yeah. views. So we'll put forward the softy Tugan hats and yeah. the hunts. And there's doubtless an element of that in the Conservative Party as well. Yeah. But just, you, you just notice, I mean, like in the commentary ads, you know, the, the, the regular people, no one cares about the skin colour. No sure. one cares. No one cares. And... um. And the latest shocking tweet on this subject didn't actually mention Kemi, but Omar Jalili came out and said exactly what we're talking about. Latest Conservative Party members thinking, oh. Suella, Asian cross and a girl cross. Nishi, <laughs> Indian cross, but a bloke, tick. What? Penny, white, tick, but a girl cross. Tugboat, I don't know if we can say that word, but he, then he has a go at Tom Tugan. But it's not even a good tweet, is it? It's but semi-coherent. he's not in the lead. Like It's nonsense. But it, it's just bizarre projection again. That yeah. we're all thinking like the member the members aren't thinking like that at all. The members are thinking who's gonna deliver Brexit, who's gonna lower taxes. But if anything, with the sort of Rishi and Penny, it's the opposite. You know, it's the the fact that she's white is actually a demerit against her in the sort of identity politics sphere. But she's female, so there's that. Rishi, well he's man, so that's a bit of a demerit as well, but he is Indian, therefore. You know, that's like yeah. You know that that's the thought process that's going on in the Conservative sort of headquarters. I know, but he's saying that the members are basically racist, misogynists who think like this. <laughs> but the only people I've heard say this are lefties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, Kemi Badenoch's really right-wing, brilliant. Yeah, and she totally triggers them. I think there was another one from yeah. a, a Lib Dem, former Lib Dem candidate. Oh, don't know yeah. if we got that. Oh, whatever. There's a, there's a good one from Damien Councillor. He had a whole thread on these. Someone had posted all their mixed race marriages they posted like Ke- uh, Kemi I don't know we might have scrolled away from it but it's Kemi and, and other candidates and how here we go how they have white husbands so and they just posted that we're getting into the interracial marriage life. this is the deep racism of the left they're complaining <laughs> that she's a race mixer yeah yeah oh it gets right, bad right okay it gets bad and not you know they've got Sajid Javid yeah, yeah, yeah. they've oh, got uh, oh, Priti yeah. Patel they've got Suella Brabham and they're saying look they all mix races guys and there's a rep- <laughs> and someone's reply to this thread with just a, the longest like list of sort of traitors this is how they think on Jesus the left Christ. it's insane yeah, yeah. like no interracial yeah. marriage guys I'm like wow oh, okay yeah yeah that's, normally that's, I have that's... to go to 4chan for this content yeah that's, <laughs> that's really racist <laughs> So, yeah, it's absolutely shocking. And that's why she absolutely sends the left into an implosion. I don't know if we got the Lib Dem one. doesn't particularly matter. Oh, there it is. A former Lib Dem candidate. Get your immigrant offspring face off my screen. The ECHR is probably the reason why you're in the country. Yeah, because Swella Bradman spoke against the ECHR saying we don't really need it or in its current form. And then this guy just said, I mean, what can immigrant you say? offspring face off my screen. I know. I might actually save that and make that my background picture. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it, Carl, what? like that, it does sound different. They're going to clip that out of you now. See, we told you about Carl Benjamin. Hey, man, I'm just a Lib Dem voter. Don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is where the Lib Dems are at, guys. You thought, these used to be so pleasant, the Lib Dems. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. all about just yeah, like yeah. little England, but yeah. not anymore. And, um, <laughs> in terms of the party of anti-immigrants. No, I love it. Mad, isn't it? And yeah. I hope, I don't know if we've got time, but Shelby Young is basically summed up why this makes Kemi very strong in a general yeah. election. 
the second thing I'm looking at is, um, well, who can take on Keir Starmer at the dispatch box? Who can lead the Conservatives to victory over the Keir-led Labour Party at the next general election, which is probably going to be with us in 18 months? Well, I don't think Tom Tugendhat or Jeremy Hunt could successfully do that. I think that narrows it down to two, to Penny and Kemi. I think they're the only two who could really take on and win uh, a general election. Um, uh, but uh, the difference between them is that Kemi is uh, passionately anti-woke. Uh, she's proven her bona fides again and again. She took on the teaching of critical race theory in schools. She's taken on the trans lobby in her capacity as an equality minister. Um, you saw today what she said. She's very pro-free speech. She's very anti-identity politics. Um, so there you go. That's the pitch for Kemi, basically. Yeah. He said it, so I didn't have to. And uh, the other thing he missed is that she's an engineer... Uh, which we've got a tweet about, you know, she wants to do things like, oh, and she wants to shake up the treasury and things like that. She actually wants yeah. to get stuff done. Thinking about it logically as an engineer, what can we actually do? She's actually smart. She's that's, actually smart. That's what's unusual for conservative candidates. She's the only one who can really think, as Starkey yes. put it. Exactly. So, because we've, we've covered that. And the only real criticism is a lack of experience. She hasn't been in cabinet, but she pointed out, we don't really have time to video, but she said that she's done two ministerial jobs simultaneously you know, she did it so well, no one noticed the other person was missing sort of thing. So she's on it, man. I don't really care. And, and lots of people, they're in the cabinet. They're sullied by being in the cabinet. Well, I was going to say exactly that. When they say lack of experience, I think unpolluted by Westminster politics. Exactly. So that can be a positive. The question is, can she get through the party and all their shenanigans? Gove's back to some people think he's just doing that to split the right wing vote and later switch to Rishi. It's a Gove type thing to do. We may, he might just like her. Uh, and, and there's pressure on her now to drop out in favour of trust from Lord Frost urges Kemi Bay not to stand down for Liz Truss and he's saying if we don't do that Rishi's going to win it in the next one and uh, that's his argument if the Tory right can't unite around a candidate Rishi Sunak could be PM by default and that is a bit of a that is a bit of a concern although today I think it was Simon Hoare MP told uh, Frost where to go I don't wish to be rude but who the hell is an unelected failed minister to tell any MP what to do for some unknown reason David Frost perpetually thinks we give a flying bleep what he thinks we don't and we won't so I do like uh, Frost as these things go, but yeah, I, I, admit, I don't see why Kemi should stand down, really. They should back Kemi, I think. Probably yeah. not Trust. But let's get on to Trust. We've got a few more minutes to try and crack through yeah, these and no, have a pop fine. at Penny Morden. Uh, <laughs> Liz Trust has been weirdly quiet. All I'd seen of her until recently is just this video of her failing to leave a, a room. I don't know if we have this <laughs> video. She basically, she does the speech and then she tries to get out at the end. I think it's vitally important oh, with increased one. insecurity we'll in, in Europe and across the world okay. that we are putting our money where our mouth is. I will campaign as a Conservative and I will govern as a Conservative. I can lead, I can make tough decisions and I can get things done. I am ready to be Prime Minister from day one. That's basically her pitch, that she's ready, straight out of the box, batteries included. There's an un unboxing video vibe, a reliable product. She's done it before. The thing is, she's an idiot. <laughs> and the, like, She didn't mention that in the piece. No, weirdly, that wasn't her first foot forward. But like this, I will govern as a Conservative. It's like, well, you are going to become the leader of the Conservative Party, theoretically. So, like, how, what a sad state of affairs. That's the pitch. I'm going to govern as a Conservative. It's like, okay, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, and, and but she was really weirdly quiet, and I was wondering why if she's one of the favourites. What's she been doing? Well, I don't know. But is she hang launching on, hang now? On, hang on, hang on. It, the, this might be strategic, right? Because yeah. the the less she talks, the less people know that she's an idiot. <laughs> it could be that, and it's also strategic in the sense that the front runner usually doesn't win in a Tory race, and Rishi's been out front, mm. whereas Liz is just sort of Liz, like I know it. Liz Truss has just been sort of <laughs> just launching. Now. Well, I call Kemi Kemi, but I call. Liz Truss, Truss. Yeah. But she has now got the support of the ERG, though. We got that um, tweet, John, about the ERG. Here we go. Huge boost for Liz Truss, as entire 60-strong European research group told to vote for the Foreign Secretary to be leader. So, And they've said, look, we agreed on this, let's get behind us. So that is huge that she's got them. It's a pity. I'd have much rather they went. My thing is, why, why not just persuade Kemi to be more Brexity rather than persuade, in the future, the general electorate to try mm. and vote for Liz Truss? She's going to get crushed. Exactly. Just, just go with Kemi and say, Kemi, can you be a bit more Brexity? And then we'll all back you. Yes, yeah. done. Yeah. I mean, is that too simple, guys? Maybe it doesn't work like that. But they wanted, they wanted Braverman probably because they're the Brexit yeah. Spartans, but now they've switched. But unfortunately, they've switched to Truss rather than, than, uh, than Kemi. Let's just do Rishi then, the obvious front runner. I'm skipping ahead. Um, he's got the slick, competent demeanor. He's got the first name recognition. 
all that stuff. He did vote leave, but the fact that the front runner never wins, he also wielded the knife against Boris. Yeah. And presided over a dodgy economy. He clearly had plans. Yes, he had his video ready. Yeah, six months ago. Yes, bit dodge. Yeah. And he's very rich, of course. He's got the non-dom scandal. Uh, You know, we could. I don't know if we've got time to play the summary from Toby. We could do it. Yeah, go on. Why not? I didn't particularly like um, uh, what he did as chancellor, though, you know, um, in his defence, I think he was one of the few people in the cabinet um, arguing against um, a draconian lockdown policy um, over the last two and a half years. Uh, So he has that going for him. Um, But notwithstanding, you know, what you think about his record as chancellor, I mean, I think his 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 shortcoming, as far as I'm concerned, is I just don't think he could beat um, uh, Keir Starmer. Um, I mean, he has too many negatives. You know, um, his wife's a non-dom. Um, he had a green card until quite recently. Um, you know, he's worth, what, 700 plus million. Um, uh, he went to Winchester. I mean, I just don't think those sorts of credentials will play well in the Red Wall. And it's sort of a gift to the Labour Party. Um, you know, he's just a kind of, you know, he'll be portrayed as rich, out of touch, doesn't know what it's like to live in the real world, doesn't really understand the cost of living crisis, um, you know, contributed to that crisis by letting inflation get out of control. So I think for all those reasons, he wouldn't be able to beat, or at least he'd struggle, I think, in a way that I don't think Penny Mordaunt or Kenny Badenoch would to beat Labour at the next general election. All right. Toby's pretty much done our work there, nailing that. I mean, and the, the, we'll skip the mog, but the Daily Mail's been having a pop at him saying that we'll skip... Yeah, that's just... He, he, he wants to... He's high tax reach because he's worried about the next generation having debt, but the problem yeah. is that means he's doing a very unconservative policy of yeah. high taxes. And, pissing uh, away our money. Exactly. And the, the funny thing is, the Daily Mail for the last several days has just been running these pieces. Why did Rishi, when did Rishi Sunak decide to knife his old boss? Months ago. Uh, yeah, and then they've got another one, which is like, he's rubbish. Uh, father's family fortune takes huge hit. Rich dad, and also he's rubbish. Mm. His shares are going down. And then they've got one, another one about something or other. Oh, yeah, is he losing momentum? Just, just hit. So the Daily Mail are not keen. Mog's very, very not keen. I think we won't have time for that video, but he's very not keen. Good. But I think we should just switch, switch to get to Penny quickly because... We have to just quickly yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's destroy just Penny yeah. because <laughs> she must be stopped. I've started the Never Mordant movement. We have left the worst to last because she, she's so she she cannot win. I mean, obviously she's hot, right? That's a big advantage. <laughs> <laughs> obviously she's making us all th- think of like our domineering schoolmistresses. Yeah, there is that. Do you yeah. ever have this with like you start to think part of you thinks like maybe a political person is sort of hot, and then you sort of exaggerate and you end up thinking they're really. Like, I was talking. To, I was on Jeff Norcott's podcast, and he said, "Yo, I quite sort of fancy Angela Rayner," and I was like, "She's My no." God, why does that keep coming up? I know, and I said, "Well, she's no pretty Patel." <laughs> and then we're into this ridiculous, and then you think, "Well, Mordant's the next level again," and that's obviously helping her, but. And she's ex-Navy, but she's ultra-woke, as you've said. She's WEF. The most famous example of wokeness is this clip she did on the... Uh, which but we let had, me there say we in proposing them from this dispatch box that trans men are men, trans women are women, and great care has been taken in the drafting of, uh, and the accepting of these amendments to ensure that that message it has been got across. She had to walk all that back. And she walked all that back and, and then lied about it later. Yeah, yeah. so It's, it's pretty bad. One is bad that she's that woke. She tried to get this word, this phrase pregnant people into this bill instead of woman. And then she, yeah, then she walks it back and said, oh, I'm not really into all that. I mean, literally a member of the Labour Party. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's shocking. And the, her comments on Dad's Army were absolutely shocking if we have that piece. She, she called it um, a full house bingo card of casual racism, homophobia, white privilege, colonialism, transphobia, bullying, misogyny, and sexual harassment. Oh, why did you just... think it was good? <laughs> <laughs> I Again, accidental advertisement there. I know, not just Dad's Army, but those general sitcoms. It was absolutely, it was absolutely <laughs> pathetic. Um, where, and this, I'm trying to get to the good one. There was that one from Dub, uh, Toby Young that you showed before yeah. where she's full WEF. Yeah. And there's another one where she lists another set of great things that are just... Uh, as if they're bad. I'm sorry. I'm just. Ra- I'm just writing through it. But she. Bit, she just basically says everything good is bad and, and vice versa. Yeah. Oh, here she goes. I'll just. I'll just read it myself. This Toby one, a Toby Young tweet. She said this thing. It, she said it was long-term male, patient, predictable, factual, planned, heterosexual, white, Christian, Western. She said all those things. They're all. Yeah. They're yeah. All good. Yeah. As if that's bad. Yeah. The the ain't, ain't half hot mum. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so all that's shocking. She also loves censorship. Uh, she she's pro the online safety bill. Blah blah blah. I thought we just we just I've got too much to do. I thought we just end on that video of uh, 
Lord Frost. He basically summed up the problem with Penny Morden in this video to with Julia Hartley Brewer the other day and pretty much threw her, threw her under the bus. Yeah. Penny Morden, what do you make of her as a potential Prime Minister? Yeah, so I have worked with, with, with Penny. I'm, to be honest, I'm quite surprised that she is where she is in this leadership race. Um, she was my deputy, uh, notionally, more than really, I think, in the, um, the, uh, the Brexit talks last year. When you say notionally more than really, what do you mean? So, I, I mean, she, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, that I felt she did not master the detail that was necessary in in the negotiations last year. Um, she wouldn't always deliver tough messages to the European Union when we when we when that was necessary and I'm afraid she um, she wasn't f sort of fully accountable she wasn't always visible sometimes I didn't even know where she she was and I'm afraid this became such a problem that after six months I had to ask the Prime Minister to move her on and find somebody else uh, to support me. You have to remember this was a time when we were in a, a major conf confrontation over Northern Ireland. It was extremely difficult and I'm afraid we just were not getting the... And the Prime Minister agreed needed. to move her on? Uh, yes, uh, he Are did. Are you saying that in your view, as Penny Morden, as your junior at this time, that Penny, G Penny Morden was not up to the job at that low level? That. Do you then therefore think she'd be up to the job of being Prime Minister? That was my view. I'm, I'm afraid if you're a Prime Minister, you've got to take responsibility, you've got to be able to run the machine, you've got to be able to take tough decisions, deliver tough messages. Anybody can be photoed in a video with, I vow to be <coughs> my country, but it's what you do in practice. Are you able to be tough? Are you able to lead? Are you able to take responsibility? And that, I'm talking only about my own experience with her, uh, but from the basis of what I saw, I'm afraid I would have grave reservations about that. There you um, go. You get the idea. He, my sister... Uh, uh, he completely threw her under the bus. And... Um, yeah, he, su he summarised it quite well. So in summary for the whole thing, the candidates that are still there, I'd say Tugan Hat, we can't forgive for the scrutiny thing, but he won't win anyway. Uh, I want Kemi, but it's tough for her because she hasn't got the party support. Trust would be better than Rishi. Rishi, shockingly, would be better than Morden. And I think that's where we are. God, that's disappointing. Isn't and it? thankfully, at least Jeremy Hunt has gone out. That's all. That's the only yeah, well, positive. There's a <laughs> Try yeah. to end on yeah. a positive there. Yeah, thank God he's gone. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on site, such as this live hangout here, being the Wisdom in the Book of Songs with uh, Luke Avery and Carl there. And if you want to follow else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.